can you hear me? Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sudeep Gary. I'm postdoc from Entomology Department as UK. Today, I'm going to present about some in production by the common bed bugs. Uh, uh, especially, these common bed bugs are found in, especially in tropical region, somewhere in United, United States, European region, and many other countries. And in Asia and some other countries where this temperature is hot, uh, there is a tropical bed bug, which is another species. Today, I'm going to focus on common bed bugs, which are found in the United States and European region. This is the current situation of bed bug problem in uh, old. You can see this is a red dot. This red dot indicates presence of bed bugs in those countries. Just focus on this. Just focus on this United States, pretty much covered with bed bugs. All cities are covered with bed bugs. This is a tiny, tiny creature that's covering with the, covering this United States almost. All cities are like infested with bed bugs. All hotels, many airline industry like get the bed bugs, and even like many of sick cruise ship and many other like homeowners, all the apartment are getting the bed bugs. Not only on the United States, you can see in the African country, European country, Asian country, all has the bed bugs now. This is the biology of bed bugs. You can see um, bed bug has a multiple life stages. Definitely they are blood sucking pests. They suck on human blood, especially. And also they have, uh, they use the blood from some other animals such as poultry house, or poultry bird, and many other places. And they have a multiple life stages. You can see uh, this is the egg stage. From the egg stage, it turns into five different baby stages, the nymphal stage that calls the baby stage. For each stage for molting, they turn into new stages, they need the blood milk to turn into new stages because they, they need blood milk for the energy to convert inside the body and they will turn into another stage. From nymphal stages to adults, they also blood milk. And for the adults, they need blood milk for survival as well as reproduction. Definitely, you have seen in this many places, probably some of you have uh, encountered the bed bug in your home. This is the situation of bed bugs in the mattresses. You can see this is a all the fecal material, there are many bed bugs in this mattress. And also definitely you have seen this in a dormitory store, people throw the cows, the infested cows, and you can people leave a big sign of bed bugs. And not only in this, these are the two primary places that bed bugs live because we spend time there, most of the time in night time, evening time, morning time in the couch and the mattresses to sleep and bed bugs live in a very close places so that they can come in the night time and suck your butt. Definitely, we have seen many lawsuits now, especially to hotel industry, airplane. I have heard with the cruise ship as well, and many other places. There are a lot of uh, lawsuits that cause a lot of money for the many people. And also, to control the bed bugs, we need to hire the pest control industry because we cannot apply the insecticide ourselves because those are very toxic. So we need a professional people to apply the insecticide inside our home or those special areas so that it cause lot of money like we require a lot of money to control those especially in those area definitely it has a health impact uh, not only economical it has a lot of different health impact especially with the biting because they come in the night time they'll suck the blood and they will leave some kind of chemical there so that develops the big rashes here you can see this is one of the arms of the one of the people so this is the one of the allergies that it develops with the bed bug biting and on, only like not only the uh, like uh, rashes when people feel like they have a bed bug in their home, even with a single bed bug, they cannot sleep in the nighttime and they develop sleeplessness, also anxiety and many, many other like mental impacts and they have visited the different other hospitals for solving their problems. And recently we have found the histamine in bed bugs, so we don't know the effects of histamine, bed bug histamine to us, but today I'm going to talk a little bit about the histamine, bed bug histamine uh, in my uh, presentation. So especially uh, there is interesting relations between the uh, bed bugs and bed bugs and the histamine. Especially you can see this is a black dot. You can see a lot of bed bugs are crowded here. They are aggregated together. Especially this black dot. I'm just focused here. This is a fecal material. After blood meal, they deposit the fecal material in their harborage. This fecal material contain the histamine. Histamine serve as an aggregation pheromone for them so that they can come close together in their harborage. They can find the uh, harborage due to this compound, especially it's acting as a pheromone so that they can attract it to their harborage to find uh, the harborage after coming back from their blood meal. 
So, and uh, not only histamine, there are a few other compounds, but especially we are focusing fully on histamine. This is serving as a um, pheromone compound for a bed bug aggregation. And also recently, uh, Debris et al. 2018 uh, found that uh, histamine is found in high concentration in bed bug infested home, especially compared to non infested home. And uh, they analyzed the dust from the indoor dust from the infested apartment versus non infested apartment, and they found very high concentration of the histamine uh, in indoor dust. And histamine is good and bad for our health. Histamine serves a good function in our body, but when body is exposed to too much amount of histamine or body produces too much amount of histamine inside our body, then it gives the negative effects. Uh, there are many different negative effects. You can see here, one of the negative effects is allergies. Many people have allergies. I even have allergies with histamine. So I take like one of the tablet, uh, anti-histamine tablet, and many people take this kind of tablet for their solving the allergies, especially in relation to histamine. Uh, histamine. So you can easily find this over the counter and people, many people take in the daily life, like one tablet can solve the histamine uh, problem, histamine allergy. So what's the knowledge gap in terms of bed bugs? We know that now bed bugs uh, produce the histamine, especially for aggregation pheromone, and also they have found that in indoor dust, histamine is dear, but I don't, we don't know like how bed bugs contribute the indoor uh, dust, indoor contamination. We don't know how much they produce, what life stage they produce, and how much they can produce, we don't know so far. Therefore, I have two different objectives for today's talk. The first objective is evaluate the histamine uh, production among different live stages. I mentioned that it has a different live stage and also characterize the histamine production over time. So with a single board meal, how much histamine they can produce, how long they can produce, we don't know any knowledge on that. So pretty simple method here. First. I fed the bed box in rabbit blood. We use the rabbit blood for the bed box creating. Now we use the human blood as well. So fully, after fully fed, you can see body can, bed box can drink the blood. It's like three times their body size. So they can, they, they can drink too much. So after fully fed, you can see the size of bed box here in the rabbit blood. I put them in this small vial with the filter paper as a harbor is. After, after seven days, I take out the bed box and I only use the filter paper and this vial that contaminated with their fecal material to analyze for histamine. So again, like the histamine extraction, I extracted the histamine in this uh, water. Uh, I use the histamine, uh, level histamine, uh, which, is, um, uh, which act as an internal standard to compare the histamine with the bed box. And there is between the GCMS analysis for quantifying the histamine quantity, I have said is a process and I use the um, histamine final, final solution of histamine toluene, which is one of the solvent uh, to analyze in GCMS so that I can quantify the amount of histamine in bed bug sample. So here is the result from Y -ax, uh, first objective. In Y axis, you can see the microgram of histamine per bed box per day, in a single day. And even you can see in the X axis, bed bug live stages. I already mentioned in the introduction that they have a different live stage. And you can see the different live stages here. All live stages can produce the so much amount of histamine. You can see here, the mated female can produce the 15 microgram of histamine in just a single day. Not only like mated female, all live stages produce the histamine and the small baby, the first star name can produce the lowest amount of the histamine because they are a smaller size, but all live stages can produce the histamine. Here is the result for second objective. Again, same type of graph, microgram of histamine per bed box per day, and you can see in the x axis days after feeding with a single broad meal. This is with just single for broad meal. And you can see after 21 days in the x axis, they can produce the histamine up to 21 days with just single broad meal. That's the lot of amount of histamine. You can see 47 micrograms of histamine with a single bed box in 21 days. And I was finding the result like up to 21 days because some bed box died, but they are producing so much amount of histamine just like in 21 days with single broad meal. And the highest amount was produced in day three is eight microgram. You can see in this like video, like there are like thousands, 10,000, 20,000 of bed bugs in this uh, video, like just assume like severe infestation of bed bugs can produce how much amount of histamine. We have estimated in some apartment or home like more than 30,000 bed bugs in just in one mattress. Let's suppose the one place has like 10,000 bed bugs in that place, like in that mattress or sofa, they can produce 50 milligrams of histamine just in a single day with a single broad meal by single bed box, with a, like 10,000 bed bugs. 
by multiplying with the single bed box numbers. That's a lot of amount of histamine. We don't know how much, how, how, how much histamine is needed for the allergies. There is unknown, but like there are a lot of histamine in indoor dust. So conclusion, they can produce the histamine by all live stages and they can produce the histamine over time. And one of the results, like ongoing results, like ongoing work based on my results, I'm working on mitigation strategy, strategies. Also, I'm comparing the histamine production between rabbit blood and human blood. They can produce in human blood. I'm not presenting here, but they can produce in human blood. I'm currently working on that. And also like um, they can like produce, the, I'm also looking for a mechanism of histamine production, how they produce the histamine inside their body. I'm looking for basic work. And also this definitely these uh, results lead into the uh, great significance in the field of science, especially we can uh, look for mitigation strategies as well as uh, different other uh, health impact. One of the PhD students in our lab working on how like histamine indoor dust is compared with the allergies and she's working on that, uh, which is ongoing work. And at last, I'd like to thank everyone from my lab for helping in this project, especially NIS for fully funding this work. Thank you so much for listening.